everyone, Ivy here. Today I want to talk about my upcoming plans for my spring and summer history bounding wardrobe. Incorporating little pieces of historical fashion into your everyday wardrobe is called history bounding. I think that overall my fall wardrobe was really successful, but I have also found that none of the pieces that I made for that wardrobe are very versatile at all. With spring and summer coming up, I feel like I don't have anything to wear. In fact, the dress that I'm wearing now is pretty much the only thing that I feel like I have that is appropriate for summer that I like enough to actually wear on a regular basis. So today I wanna to hang out and do a little bit of cleaning and maybe even actually spend some time making a few garments for my new wardrobe. The thing that makes my fall and winter wardrobe not particularly versatile is that I use so many fabrics that are really only appropriate for those seasons. It's pretty much all flannel and wool. I wanna focus a lot more on like nice light cottons and linens and things like that. I already picked out a few different fabrics that I'm waiting on to come in the mail. Now, I really didn't wanna wait for all that stuff to come in the mail, so I did pick up this yellow Swiss dot at my local fabric store. So I'm excited to work with this to start with. For my fall wardrobe, I focused a lot on separates, so I have a lot of blouses and a lot of skirts, but almost no dresses. So for my spring and summer wardrobe, which I want to be really easy to wear, I think I'm gonna try and focus a little bit more on dresses. Now, I really struggled with how to incorporate historical elements into my dresses because it's much more common in history to actually have a separate bodice and skirt piece. So what I decided I wanted to do was just take a few blouse patterns that I really like and just extend the hem so long that it essentially becomes a dress. Unfortunately, although I do think I'm a good seamstress, I'm kind of a terrible artist. And I'm hoping that tracing the line art using my projector is going to make the design process a lot less painful. I also have a few unfinished pieces that I think would work really well for this wardrobe. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and actually finish up a couple of things since they're both about 90% done. about the sleeves. I think they look a little bit 70s-ish, which is not necessarily what I had intended, but I think I'm hoping that the collar and the kind of blousey front are going to fix that. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it's coming along, actually. All right, so it's now day two and I have made quite a bit of progress on that pale yellow dress. I think that my goal for today is to try and finish the dress and also the two blouses that I was talking about. Now, I'm hoping that I can accomplish all of these things because the two blouses honestly really genuinely don't have that much work left to do on them. If I remember right, both of the blouses do still need closure mechanisms and then a few other small finishing details. And then I remember that the other thing that's wrong with it is this cuff came out just a tiny bit too tight to the point where it's uncomfortable. And I feel like I know myself, I'm just not gonna wear it if it's not comfortable. So it's not as pretty of a finish, but I think I'm gonna take the hook and eye off and replace it with elastic. Now, I probably could go to all the trouble of taking off the cuff and the piece of lace at the bottom and redoing the cuff slightly bigger, but I think it's okay to save time sometimes, especially on something that's not going to a formal event. This blouse is also in really similar shape, so there are really only two things left to do on it, a closure mechanism, and this one happens to need the facing of the collar to be stitched down so that it stays in place. I have one other super exciting update for today, which is that the fabric actually came in the mail. I'm so excited. So I'm gonna show you the different cuts of fabric that I got and what I'm planning on doing with each of them. So I think that that looked like a lot more fabric than it really is. One of the kind of unfortunate things about historical costuming is that everything takes a thousand yards. So I really only have a couple of projects that are actually in this stack. This one is not really summer wardrobe, but I'm planning on making an outfit based on the Haunted Mansion, and this is like kind of perfect. This one came in the mail and it's a little bit different of a color than I thought it was going to be. It's very much like a pinky, kind of like raspberry color. I thought it was gonna come in the mail and be more like a 
orange type of tone. I got talked into keeping this and I probably shouldn't have. As an almost redhead, wearing pink is not always the best choice. I don't know, what do you think? It might work. Next, I have, ugh. Originally when I bought this, I knew that I was planning on doing like an 1895 puff sleeve blouse with it, which takes five yards. But you can actually also do an entire modern Edwardian walking skirt with about five yards. I think that they're both a good idea. I haven't decided exactly what I'm gonna end up doing. My problem with those 1895 blouses is that they feel a little bit less wearable than some other things, so I'm not always like super into them. This is hopefully going to be a full length Edwardian wrapper dress. Wrappers are something that women would have worn around the house to do chores and just, it's essentially like the Edwardian version of like sweatpants. It's something that you would just wear around the house. It's not meant to be seen by really anyone. And um, they're very casual and they're often made out of what are called calicos which are just like plain cotton prints. I'm really excited about this. I bought a really cute pattern for it. I think that it's gonna be a really good choice because it's gonna be so lightweight. And I also really like the appeal of having a single garment to wear rather than trying to choose a skirt, a top, accessories, and all of those things. This is a navy blue linen blend. I am so happy with this fabric. It's perfect. I think it's gonna match like a million different things. After I finish that pale yellow Swiss dot dress, I think that this is definitely next on my list. I'm kind of hoping that I can finish it before the end of this video. This was kind of an impulse purchase. I think this is something that's probably going to be last just so I can make a few other things and see how they might look together at the end. I guess that was it. I really didn't have that many things to show you. Oh wait, there's one more. <laughs> And then this is something that I already had on the shelf. I bought five yards of it. I think it would be cuter as a blouse than it would as a skirt. If I make a blouse, then I have no idea what skirt I would wear with it. So I'm kind of like, kind of stuck on skirt for this one. And I think those are all of my big plans for now. So for today, I'm hoping to finish up that dress and do the closures on both of those blouses. And then tomorrow I'm hoping to start that blue linen skirt. everyone, it's day three and obviously I had time to finish the first dress. I also had time to finish the closures on the yellow blouse. I didn't unfortunately have time to work on the buttons on the other blouse that has also been in limbo, but I think that I'll be able to finish that today. And then I also am going to go ahead and get started on that skirt, which is gonna be the last project for this video, although I am still planning a ton of other things that I want to make for my summer wardrobe. So here is the blouse so far. I think it's gonna look really nice with the navy blue skirt. So I'm really looking forward to having a couple of new things. off camera and I'm really happy with how it came out. The design is pretty simple. I used the truly Victorian 1895 shirtwaist pattern, but I swapped the sleeve that it comes with for a different sleeve from a truly Victorian pattern. I'm glad that I went with a smaller puff sleeve just because I think it's a little bit more wearable. I also think that the subtle blue stripe is gonna go really well with a lot of different things, including the skirt that I made in this video. The skirt I think has a lot of pros and cons. 
On the good side, it's really simple and easy to put together and it doesn't take that much yardage. Now, on the bad side, it really didn't come out as full as I was expecting it to. So I'm not as happy with the profile on this one as I wish I were, and I'm not sure that I'll be making this skirt as much as I thought I would. I'm really glad that I finally took the time to finish that yellow striped shirt. I think it looks really cute, it definitely looks historical, and it's gonna match so many things in my wardrobe. The one thing I would probably do differently next time is probably not using hook and eyes on the back. I don't know why I keep doing this because I know that they don't work that well. Maybe I'm just being lazy, but buttons are really the way to go. They just are more secure, I think, than hook and eyes. Unfortunately, I never did end up finishing that white blouse that I promised myself I would finish, so that one's gonna go back in my UFO stack for a different day. And lastly, the thing that I'm probably the least excited about is the dress. I've made this pattern at least once before, and I guess I just forgot that I wasn't that excited about the silhouette of it then, and I'm definitely not that excited about it now. You know what it looks like? It looks like 70s does Victorian. And that can be a really cute look, but it really wasn't what I was going for. So I'm not sure that I really see myself wearing this dress all that much. I'm really excited to have so many projects to look forward to, and I will probably update you in the summer after I've actually had time to make them. But I think that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.